Well, hello, hello, hello. Welcome everyone to Face to Face Conversations with God. It's your girl Chantel, and it's time to journey through the word of the Lord together. Well, on today, we are going to be reading from the New Testament. We've been in the Old Testament for about three or four months. We are now going over to the New Testament, and we're going to be reading the books of First and second corinthians all right so let me go ahead and get my um uh platforms going go ahead and share 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 if this broadcast is blessing you you know how you bless me you share it ha huh? that's what you do you share it with your friends and family all right so let me just get this going out here Okay, there we go. Boom. And we're starting our watch party. Well, all right. So we're in the book of Corinthians, and I'm going to be reading from the Living Bible. I used to love reading from the Living Bible. Oh, my gosh. It's a little wordier than the King James, but I want to bring it home. I want to make sure that it's understood. Now, the way I have my Bible in here is I'm paralleling it with the King James. Uh, there's a reason why I'm doing that because a lot of times I'm going to refer back to the King James because it's the way you're used to it sounding, but I want to make sure you understand what's being said. So as we um, begin to read the book of Corinthians, I always like to do an overview when we're starting a new book, all right? So let's go ahead and go into prayer, and then we are um, going to go ahead and start reading. Today, I'm only reading three chapters, and that's because we've got to go through the overview, all right? Okay, so Father, we come before you thanking you for this day. We thank you for this privilege that we have to read your word. We thank you, Lord God, that you didn't leave us here and just said, work it out, make your own way. But you left us a guideline. You left us a post along the way so that we could see how we are to walk this word out. And we can see that we're not just walking out the word in our own strength, but we're walking out the word in the strength of you. It's you that gives us the strength to walk out the word. And we, by faith, take a hold of the word and apply it to our lives. Oh God, we thank you that you're opening up our eyes so that we could see. At one time, we would read the Bible and it was just a bunch of words on a page and it didn't make a whole lot of sense and we, didn't, we couldn't see how we could apply it to our lives, but you're causing our eyes to be open. And then you're causing our ears to be open to hear your voice, to hear your heart as we read your word. Ah, to hear your love, to even receive correction when we read the word. We thank you for this, Father. And then, Holy Spirit, we thank you that we know you are the spirit of truth. Hallelujah. It is you, Holy Spirit, that reveals the truth of the word. It is you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah that helps us to see God. It is you, Holy Spirit, that helps us to receive the gift that Jesus left us. And Holy Spirit, you even reveal yourself. So Holy Spirit, in these times that we've been living, where we have gotten multiple misunderstandings of the word, multiple mistruths of the word, we're operating under myths. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are dismantling all untruth. Every lie that has been spoken, you are disseminating it. And we are now able to hear the simplicity of the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We thank you for this, Father. Whoa, how we thank you. Thank you for how you're pouring out of your spirit into us as we read your word. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that if we're in need of salvation, you're causing our hearts to be softened so that we can receive salvation. If we're needing deliverance, you're causing us to get deliverance as we read the word. 
If we need healing, you're sending forth healing as we read the word. If we have caught ourselves and we're all in chains and we bound ourselves up, you are setting us free. It's not a man or a woman, but it's you, God, that does the healing. It's you, God, that sets us free. It's you, God, that delivers us. And it's you, God, hallelujah, that ministers a need for salvation. So we thank you for this, Lord God. We thank you for how your weighty anointing is resting in our homes, on our jobs while we're listening, in the car while we're driving, as we're reading your word. We thank you, Lord God, that we are learning how to walk in the authority that Jesus gave us. We thank you for this in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. So we're going to start the book of Corinthians. All right, I'm excited about this one, okay? All right, so let me give you an overview of the Corinthians, all right? So the book of Corinthians was written for the people of Corinth, all right? Okay, so Corinth was a cosmopolitan city. It was located in the southern part of the modern-day Greece. Hmm, isn't that something? It was part of the Roman Empire. It was also one of the richest cities in the world. So you can think of it as maybe like a New York or a Tokyo or a London. Um, it was a cosmopolitan city. Many sailors and merchants came through Corinth and could hear the gospel and take what they heard to others when they went back to their locales. Now, we must also note it was also one of the most wicked cities. What? Ah! <laughs> yep, it sure was. Immorality, bad, unscrupulous business deals, pagan practices, including the worship of Aphrodite. See, that spirit is still alive today. See why you need to read? Because you don't understand what these spirits are and why uh, they're, they're, they're looking for hosts so that they can bring themselves to the forefront. Listen to what the spirit of Aphrodite is. Aphrodite, the goddess of love and beauty and passion. What? Aren't we obsessed with beauty? Aren't we obsessed with, with being, you know, just people calling us beautiful, always snapping photos of ourselves. Like, I'm all for a selfie, but there comes a limit. How many selfies can you post? Come on now. How many filters can you go through? You still going to be you. <laughs> she is the goddess of love, beauty, passion, pleasure, and procreation. Hmm, you hear that? She is identified with the planet Venus. So people that are out there worshiping all these stars and all that, come on. Which is named after the Roman goddess Venus. All right. So who was Aphrodite? The word Afro means fo uh, like foam. I know this is going to, now look, if you're listening with little children, this is going to get a little racy right here, okay? Because you have to understand who it is Aphrodite is, all right? Um, it says that uh, Aphrodite was born from the white foam, which was produced by the severed genital genitals of Uranus after her son, Kronos, through her or through him into the sea. Hmm. All right. Although she was said to be the goddess of beauty, they say her personality was damaged. Do you see this? This is that spirit that is running rampant in our world right now. This is why I tell you, although this Bible was written over 2,000 years ago, Many of the people in this Bible have passed on and gone on to glory, but the spirit is still here in the earth. That's why you need to know what's around you, what's operating around you, all right? Listen, she's the spirit of love and beauty and passion and procreation and pleasure, but the flip side of that spirit is she has a damaged soul a damaged psyche. 
she was uh, she was described as weak and frightened you see the spirit we see it operating as well as ill tempered and easily offended ah, this is what was going on in the city of corinth and paul spent a lot of time there all right note okay so we've done a little overview of the book of, of the people of corinth now we're going to start our reading of first corinthians how did this go to romans oh no it's right okay okay first corinthians chapter one verse one we're reading from the living bible all right from paul chosen by god to be jesus christ missionary and from brother Sotheus, uh, uh, Sosothe, 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 I can say his name and then I'm trying to say it on here and get all tongue tied. <laughs> to the Christians in Corinth, invited by God to be his people and made acceptable to him by Christ Jesus. We are made acceptable in Christ, in Christ, not in another man or a woman. We are made acceptable in Christ Jesus. And to all the Christians everywhere, whoever calls upon the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and theirs. May God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ give you all of his blessings and great peace of heart and mind. I can never stop thanking God for all the wonderful gifts he has given you now that you are Christ with an S he has enriched your whole life not just part of your life not just your your uh, church life when you go to church and the things that you do in, in church God has enriched your entire life everything about you has been enriched my God Many don't see that. God, open up their eyes so that they can see how you have enriched their lives. Jesus. He has helped you speak out for him and has given you a full understanding of the truth. What I told you Christ could do for you has happened. Now you have every grace and blessing every spiritual gift and power for doing his will hmm, are yours during this time of waiting for the return of the lord jesus christ you and i already the moment we receive christ the power and the authority of christ rest in us all the gifts and treasures that god has put upon your life it's already in you he's waiting for you to work it out Stop waiting for someone to give you the permission to be the person who God has called you to be. God is giving you an assignment. Get busy doing it. Just start. Just begin. All right? Okay. Now, you have every grace and blessing. I'm going to read it again. Every spiritual gift and power for doing his will are yours during this time of waiting for the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. God does not want you to put that gift that he has put in you on the shelf. He wants you to activate it, to walk in it, to be strong in it, and move in it, all right? And he guarantees right up to the end that you will be counted free from all sin and guilt on that day when he returns. My God, how I love Corinthians. God will surely do this for you. For he always does, excuse me, just what he says. And he is the one, listen, he is the one who invited you into this wonderful friendship with his son, even Christ our Lord. Listen, do you hear that? It's God that's invited you in. All right? All right. But dear brothers, 
I beg you in the name of Jesus, I'm sorry, I beg you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to stop arguing among yourselves. Let there be real harmony so that there won't be splits in the church. Holy Spirit, cause us to walk in true, pure harmony. My God, I plead with you to be of one mind, united in thought and purpose. For some of those who live at Chloe's house have told me of your arguments and quarrels, dear brothers. Some of you are saying, I'm a follower of Paul, and others say that they are for Apollos or for Peter. We hear this, I'm Church of God in Christ. I'm non-denominational. I'm Catholic. I'm Lutheran. I'm Episcopalian. I'm Protestant. Aren't you a believer? All right. And some say they are alone. <laughs> and some that they are alone are the true followers of Christ. And so in effect, you have broken Christ into many pieces. We are believers, period. Black, white, Hispanic, Asian, whatever other nationality is out there, <laughs> whatever church you go to, we are all believers, period. <sighs> but did I, Paul, die for your sins? Listen, listen, listen to this, guys. <laughs> Were any of you baptized in my name? I am so thankful now that I didn't baptize any of you except for Crispus and Gaius. For now, no one can think that I have been trying to start something new, beginning a church of Paul. Oh, yes. And I baptized the family of Stephanus. I don't remember ever baptizing anyone else. For Christ didn't send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel. And even my preaching sounds poor, for I do not fill my sermons with profound words and high-sounding ideas for fear of diluting the mighty power there is in the simple message of the cross of Christ. For all you all that think that you need all these theatrics, that you need all these big drama uh, presentations, preach the simplicity of Christ and the cross. People are going to be drawn to the message. It says that we, the Bible tells us that we are to lift up the name of Jesus. We are to lift up Jesus and not ourselves. This is what Paul is saying. Be done with all the theatrics. Let's bring back the pure preaching of the gospel. All right? Verse 18. I know very well how foolish it sounds to those who are lost when they hear that Jesus died to save them. But we who are saved recognize this message as the very power of God. For God says, I will destroy all human plans of salvation, no matter how wise they seem to be and ignore the best ideas of men, even the most brilliant of them. <laughs> Isn't that something? Do you see, you see why I love Corinthians? Because it's breaking down all this nonsense that we have seen going on in the church for years. Preach the gospel. It's not about your pastor, my pastor. Praise God that they are men and women that have submitted their lives to God and they are pouring out in us, but it's not about them. It's about Christ. He is your, your savior. 
Christ is the one that died. Christ is the one that was the sacrifice. Christ is the one that went and defeated hell and the grave. Christ is the one that gave us the authority and the power and the victory. That's where your focus should be. Spend time focusing more on him than on the church that you attend. We are all just vessels, period. We're all vessels being used by God. But it's his power working through us. All glory belongs to God. We thank him for the people that come back and applaud. But we turn the glory back over to God. All right? All right. Let's keep going. Verse 20. So what about these wise men, these scholars, these brilliant debaters of this world's great affairs? God has made them all look foolish <laughs> and shown their wisdom to be useless nonsense. <laughs> For God in his wisdom saw to it that the world would never find God through human brilliance. So if you're trying to find God in all your humanity, you'll never find him. You'll never be under, able to understand him. That is why we pray, Holy Spirit, dismantle all untruth, dismantle all lies. For Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. He only speaks the truth of the word. He only speaks the truth of God. He reveals God. He reveals Jesus. That's why it's important that you invite Holy Spirit into your life and make sure that you keep saying how you need his help because I cannot do this without him. Before I get on here, I always ask Holy Spirit to speak through me. Let me only say what heaven once said, nothing else, none of my opinions, none of my thoughts, none of my experience that will change what the word says. Ha, ah, my God, we thank you, spirit of truth, my God. Verse 24, but God has opened the eyes of those called to salvation, both Jews and Gentiles to see that Christ is the mighty power of God to save them. It's Christ that saves. It's Christ that delivers. It's Christ that sets free. Christ himself is the center of God's wise plan for their salvation. This so-called foolish plan of God is far wiser than the wisest plan of the wisest man. And God in his weakness, Christ denying, I'm sorry, Christ dying on the cross is far stronger than any man. Notice among yourselves, dear brothers, that few of you who follow Christ have big names or power or wealth. Instead, God has deliberately chosen to use ideas the world considers foolish and of little worth in order to shame those people considered by the world as wise and great. He has chosen a plan despised by the world, counting as nothing at all, and used it to bring down to nothing those the world considers great. This is why you want to ask Holy Spirit to help you to receive the simplicity of the gospel. You can't pay for it. You can't pay for salvation. You can't pay for redemption. You can't pay for grace. You can't pay for the glory of God. There's no works that you can do. It's by faith and receiving Jesus Christ and the work of the cross. That's it. It's so simple. Man thinks he has to do something great. <laughs> All right. So that no one anywhere can ever brag in the presence of God. For it is from God alone that you have your life through Christ Jesus. He showed us 
God's plan of salvation. He was the one who made us ac and acceptable to God. He made us pure and holy and gave himself to purchase our salvation. He's the one that bought it. He's the one that paid the price. How we love you, Lord Jesus. How we love you. As it says in the scriptures, if anyone is going to boast, let him boast only of what the Lord has done. My God, how we love you, Father. How we love you. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Dear brothers, even when I first came to you, I didn't use lofty words and brilliant ideas to tell you God's message. For I decided that I would speak only of Jesus Christ and his death on the cross. I came to you in weakness, timid and trembling. Do you see his heart posture? Paul, the apostle who had numerous encounters with the spirit of the living God, who wrote so many chapters in the New Testament. He didn't come in a proud, boastful way. He came in humility, timid and trembling. And my, pre my preaching was very plain, not with a lot of oratory uh, and human wisdom, but the Holy Spirit's power was in my words proving to those who heard them that the message was from God. It's Holy Spirit that reveals the message of God. Preach the gospel. Teach on Jesus. Teach on his power. Teach on his word. Let all that other stuff go because it's not working. <laughs> People are sitting in the church and they are powerless because they don't know the gospel. <laughs> Been coming to church for 20 years and don't realize they have power and authority. All right. Okie dokie. Let me see, where were we? Hmm, hmm. I did this because I wanted your faith to stand firmly upon God, not on man's great ideas. And this is where we've missed it. We have been following man's ideas and we're not firm in the gospel of Jesus Christ. If we were firm in the gospel of Jesus Christ, we would see more healing, we would see more deliverance. We would see more souls being set free. We would see more souls being delivered from the grips of hell. All right, let's keep going. Verse six. Yet, when I'm among mature Christians, I do speak with words of great wisdom, but not the kind that comes from here on earth and not the kind that appeals to the great men of this world who are doomed to fail. I'm sorry, doomed to fall. Our words are wise because they are from God. Telling of God's wise plan to bring us into the glories of heaven. This plan was hidden in former times, though it was made for our benefit before the world began. But the great men of the world have not understood it. If they had, they never would have crucified the Lord of glory. Verse, uh, verse 9. This is what is meant by the scriptures which say that no mere man have ever seen, heard, or even imagined what wonderful things God has ready for those who love the Lord. But we know about these things because God has sent his spirit to tell us. And his spirit searches out and shows us all of God's deepest secrets. You want to know the mysteries of the gospel? You want to know the mysteries of God? You got to invite 
Holy Spirit into your life. You can't tap into it without him. <laughs> no one can really know what anyone else is thinking or what he is really like except that person himself. And no one can know God's thoughts except God's own spirit. And God has actually given us his spirit, not the world spirit, to tell us about the wonderful free gifts of grace and blessing that God has given us. In telling you about these gifts, we have even used the very words given to us by the Holy Spirit, not words that we as men might choose. Mm. So we use the Holy Spirit's words to explain the Holy Spirit's facts. But the man who isn't a Christian can't understand and can accept these thoughts from God, which the Holy Spirit teaches us. They sound foolish to him because only those who have the Holy Spirit within them can understand what the Holy Spirit means. Dear God. Otherwise, I'm sorry, others just can't take it in. If you are listening and you're still trying to understand God without the help of Holy Spirit, that's when the Bible is just a bunch of words to you. And you can't conceive it. You can't grasp it. It's because Holy Spirit reveals the truth of the gospel, reveals the mysteries of the gospel, reveals Jesus to us, and he reveals God to us, and he also reveals himself. All right? He is the spirit of truth. Verse 15. But the spiritual man has insight into everything, and that brothers uh, and baffles the men of this world who can't understand him in all at all. He, how could he? For certainly he has never been one to know the Lord's thoughts or to discuss them with him or to move the hands of God by prayer. But strange as it seems, we Christians actually do have within us a portion of the very thoughts and mind of Christ. So you remember a few days ago when I said that the problem is, is that we are not operating from the mind of Christ. We have been operating from our natural mind. So let me read that verse in the King James Version, which is the verse that many of you speak, but you're not applying to your lives. <laughs> For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. You and I, when we receive Christ as our savior, the mind of Christ is imparted into us. So now we have to operate from the mind of Christ. We have to operate from the mindset of the kingdom of God and not this natural world that we live in. Is it a difficult? Yeah, yeah. Because your natural man always wants to take over. The flesh always wants to take over. The flesh always wants to be an operation, but you gotta deny it and go, nope, I'm gonna operate from a kingdom mindset. Does that mean that situations won't affect you? Yes, every day you're gonna have to have situ you're gonna have situations affect you, but you've got to begin to operate from a place where you're operating from the mind of Christ. When you would have normally lashed out, Holy Spirit says, whoop, bring it back, bring it back. That's a spirit operating through that person. It's not the person. It's the spirit operating through them, trying to get you to operate in your natural mind. Okay? So you see that I'm just making it practical for you. All right? So let's keep going. 
to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. All right. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1. Dear brothers, I have been talking to you as though you were still just babies in the Christian life who are not following the Lord, but following your own desires. I cannot talk to you as I would to healthy Christians who are filled with the Spirit. So that's letting you know you got to get filled with the Spirit. <laughs> or she's going to stay a baby your whole entire life. You can live out your whole life not filled with the Spirit of God. What? Yes. I have had to feed you with milk and not with solid food because you couldn't digest anything stronger. That's not good. You're in the same place, in the same mentality that you were when you first came to know Christ. It's time to grow up. It's time to grow in the things of God. It's time to grow in the power and the anointing and the grace and the love and the compassion and the authority and the power of God. All right? For you are still only baby Christians. Oh, wait, I left something out. He says, I had to feed you with milk and not with solid food because you couldn't digest anything stronger. And even now, you still <laughs> have to be fed on milk. You're 40 years old and still eating, drinking milk. Can't chew the weightier matters of God. It's time to grow up. Come on. We have people out there who are dying. And they need to hear your voice. You have people attached to your life that you're supposed to speak to, that you're supposed to minister the love of God, that you are supposed to exhibit God to it throughout your life. All right. Verse three, for you are still only baby Christians controlled by your own desires, not God's. If your own desires are always in control, that means your flesh is in control, you're still sucking on the milk. Time to put the bottle down and begin to eat the weightier words of God, all right? When you are jealous of one another, listen, when you are jealous of one another and divide up into quarreling groups, doesn't that prove you are still babies wanting your own way? <laughs> In fact, you're acting like people who don't belong to the Lord at all. I didn't say it. Paul said it. God allowed Paul to write this over 2,000 years ago. And we're still seeing this operating. <laughs> there you are. Quarreling, quarreling about whether I'm greater than Apollos and dividing the church. Doesn't this show how little you have grown in the Lord? Okay, well, you're saying, well, that's Apollos. Okay, well, I, I attend so-and-so's church, and he's my pastor, and she's my pastor. God's like, first of all, they're just vessels that I'm using. And I don't mean just like in a, in a little matter. I mean, we are all vessels that God is using. Are you still stuck on that? That's how we acted when we were in kindergarten and in grade school. You have to mature in the things of God. There are people waiting on you. Grow in the things of God. Come on, church. Come on, grow up. It's time to grow up. Come on. There you are, quarreling about whether I'm greater than Apollos and dividing the church. Doesn't this show how little you have grown in the Lord? Verse 5. Who am I and who is Apollos? That we should be the cause of a quarrel. Why? We're just... God's servants. Paul, the apostle Paul, said what? 
we are just God's servants. You and I are just God's servants, period. Each of us with certain abilities and with our help, you believe. Each of us, God has given us gifts and abilities to use. But we are all servants of God. Not one of us is greater than the other. You may be one that uh, God uses to save billions, but you're still a servant of God. You may be one who God allows your name to be a household name. Everybody knows who you are, but you're still a servant of God. You may receive accolades from men, and there's nothing wrong with that. You may be in an arena where God has you with music or an actor or a, a, an inventor, and your name is great in the land, but you're still a servant of God. Right? Paul said, I am just a servant of God. Verse six, my work was to plant the seed in your hearts and Apollos work was to water it, but it was God, not we, who made the garden grow in your hearts. You and I have no, we can't save anyone. We can't heal anyone. We can't deliver anyone. We can't set anyone free. It's God working through us that does that. The church, we've got to throw the glory back to God because we've been sucking it in and hearts have been getting big and lofty and puffed up because the glory is not for you. It's all God. It's him that does the work. You're just a vessel. Be a committed and surrendered vessel to God. He'll let you get honor. He doesn't, that doesn't faze him. He wants you to get the honor. He wants men to say thank you. But the glory goes to him. Okay? All right. The person who does the planting or watering isn't very important. You see where we missed it? I'm going to read that one more time. Uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 7. The li Reading from the Living Bible. Now, I'm going to read it. Um, yeah, I'm going to read it from the King James too. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Verse seven, the person who does the planting or the watering isn't very important, but God is important because he is the one who makes things grow. Coming from the King James. So there, so then neither is he that planted anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. It's all God, guys. Stop trying to suck in the glory. It's not for us. All right? Verse 8. Apollos and I are working as a team with the same aim, though each of us will be rewarded for his own hard work. We are only God's co-workers. Ah, now the light is coming on. You work for big business, you work for small business, but what? You are still a coworker. <laughs> doesn't matter if you're the manager, doesn't matter <laughs> if you're the supervisor, <laughs> if you're the team leader, <laughs> if you're the pastor, if you're the apostle, if you're the prophet, if you're the, uh, the missionary, you're still a coworker. If you're the lay person, if you're the head musician, whatever your title may be, you're still a co-worker. All right? So let's go ahead and boop, bust those bubbles. Bust those bubbles. Get that pride out because we're all in the same boat. We're all co-workers with God. He 
is the foreman. He, well, no, he's greater than the foreman. He is the owner of the whole thing. All right? We report to God. <laughs> All right? You got that? Whew! Doesn't that take some weight off of you to know that you are a co-worker now? Doesn't that take the weight off? Come on. You are God's garden, not ours. You are God's building, not ours. The people belong to God, period. Verse 10, God in his kindness has taught me how to be an expert builder. I have laid the foundation and Apollos has built on it. The foundation never changed. The foundation is solid. Apost Apollos built on the foundation. He didn't come in and chisel it and take the foundation out and say, now I'm going to put on a new foundation. No. Apollos has built on it. But he who builds on the foundation must be very careful. Be careful what we're teaching people. Don't teach them your human views on the word teach exactly what it says help people to see god it is god that heals it is god that delivers it is god that sets us free it is god that gives us redemption it is god that grows us in him not a man or a woman all right and no one can ever lay any other real foundation than that one we have we already have jesus christ Jesus Christ is the foundation. But there are but there are various kinds of materials that can be used to build on that foundation. Some use gold and silver and jewels, and some build with sticks and hay or even straw. There is going to come a time of testing at Christ's judgment day to see what kind of material each builder has used. Everyone's work will be put through the fire so that all can see whether or not it keeps its value and what was really accomplished. <laughs> then every workman who has built on the foundation with the right materials and whose work still stands will get his pay. Work to get your pay. But if the house he has built burns up, he will have a great loss. He himself will be saved, but like a man escaping through a wall of flames. What type of foundation, what type of building materials are you using? All right. Don't you realize that all of you together are the house of God and that the spirit of God lives among you in his house. If anyone defiles and spoils God's home, God will destroy him. For God's home is holy and clean and you are that home. That's beautiful. Stop fooling yourselves. If you count yourself above average in intelligence, <laughs> as judged by this world standards, you had better put all this aside and be a fool rather than let it hold you back from the true wisdom from above. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness to God. What? The wisdom of this world is foolishness to God. As it says in the book of Job, God used man's own brilliance to trap him. <laughs> ah! Sometimes we get so wise in our own minds that God uses it to trap us so that we can see, whoa, 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 this earthly wisdom that I'm trying to operate from, it just keeps crumbling, right? He stumbles over his own wisdom and falls. And again, in the book of Psalms, we are told that the Lord knows full well how the human mind 
reasons and how foolish and futile it is. That's why we take on the mind of Christ. That's why Christ gave us his mind. We just read that. We have the mind of Christ. We are to operate from the mind of Christ. You are to operate from a kingdom mindset. And we just haven't been training ourselves to do that. And it's gonna, yep, you're gonna have to practice at it. And you're gonna get better and better at operating from a kingdom mindset instead of just an earthly mindset, all right? So don't be proud of following the wise men of this world. For God has already given you everything you need. He has given you Paul and Apollos and Peter as your helpers. He has given you the world. <laughs> he has given you the whole world, excuse me, to use. And life and even death are your servants. Excuse me. He has given you all of the present <laughs> and all of the future. He's given it all to you and I. All are yours, and you belong to Christ, and Christ is God's. Do you see how Corinthians is going to transform your entire way of thinking and doing and perceiving and dealing with people and dealing with situations? So if you have been operating from your old mind, and look, we've all done it. I just told you what, a, a couple of weeks ago, maybe a week ago, that God was showing me operate from the mind of Christ. All right? We do it a little bit over here and a little bit over there, but God wants us in every facet of our life to operate from his mindset. All right? You're going to see people differently. You're going to begin to respond differently. You're going to see situations differently. You're going to understand the spirit world. You're going to understand these spirits that are working, and then you see them. Now you just don't see, um, you know, you, you can't help but wonder, why is it all of a sudden that we have these uh, all these magazines, and all they do is say, who wore it best, and look how glamorous I am, and look how pretty I am, and look how handsome I am, and look how fit I am. We're, we're a world just so engulfed in all of that. That is that spirit of Aphrodite running through the land, and it's growing bigger. It's, it's, it was, it's almost like for a time, it was kind of put down. It was, it was tampered down. But now all these spirits are beginning to reveal themselves again. The spirit of Baal and Astra, the killing of babies. Come on, that's what that stuff is. It's making its comeback. Aphrodite, all this beauty, and, and, and you're, people are going out getting surgeries. And when they're done, they look worse than when they, and I'm like, what is wrong with us? Why can't we see this? Because the spirit of this world has people's eyes blinded, has their ears stopped, has their minds and consciousness seared so that they can't see that you can't obtain this goal that you're trying to get. It's not a real goal. So if you're one who has not allowed yourself to grow in the things of God as we read Corinthians. Don't stop coming on. Keep coming on because what God is doing is he's revealing where we went off track. Doesn't mean that he doesn't love you. Doesn't mean that he's still not working in your life. He just wants all of us to grow in him. All right? That's what he wants. It's time to grow up in him. That's my alarm telling me I have to go to work. So I have to go ahead and get off, but go back and reread it. Let Holy Spirit minister to you how he wants you to grow in him. If you've been one that maybe put more stock in a man or a woman, change that thing over and, and bring it back to God. It's God that heals. It's God that delivers. It's God that sets free. It's God that gives redemption not a man or a woman. We are co-workers with God. We are heirs with Christ Jesus. 
We work in the vineyard together. We are all a team. All of us are a team. We're all working together for one thing, to lift up the name of Jesus, to lift him high, and to give the glory back to God. Preach the gospel, the truth of the gospel, not the stuff we've been hearing because people's lives have not been transformed. If we're preaching the gospel, then the lives will be transformed. All right? Okay, guys, I love you all. And I think I might be on tomorrow. I'm not sure. Uh, we've got some storms headed this way. So it might prevent me from making it back to Chicago. So if not, we'll be back on again Monday. And I might even come on Saturday, depending on what happens, because I don't know how these storms are going to affect us. All right? So I love you all. Don't forget to hit the share button. Don't forget to keep a a, a spiral and a pen with you as we read so that when something jumps out when we're reading, you can write that scripture down and then you can go back and study it. Why? Because Holy Spirit is ministering to you about that scripture, okay? If you'll notice, I mean, I don't read half of the stuff that I write down, but when I'm studying, this is what I do. I write all this stuff down. I'm like, oh, wow, Holy Spirit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, this is what I do. And it helps you to grow in the things of God, all right? Okay, guys, love you. Don't forget, also, you can have two separate journals. You can have your journal that you have when you're reading. And then also, don't forget about your prayer journals. Write your prayers out. Write out when God has uh, uh, manifested that prayer and that answer to it and date that thing. So that whenever you feel like God's not listening, you go back and you look and you see, Oh, yeah, God's listening. He answered so many of my prayers. I know he's listening. And then your prayers change. And you begin to pray from a place of victory and not from a place of, God, I hope you're listening. All right? Okay, guys, I got to go. Got to go get ready for work. Love you. We'll be back on, if not tomorrow, which is Friday. I might try to come on Saturday. If I can't come on Saturday, I know I'll be on Monday. All right? Love you. Have a wonderful week. Bye-bye.